Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Well, we're going to do one more lesson on factoring. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the difference of squares, perfect squares, factor by grouping, and we're going to discuss some guidelines for factoring polynomials completely. Let's start by talking about factoring the difference of two squares. And we're going to start from the end of this story, not the beginning. The end of this story is I've got two factors, a plus b times a minus b. And if I multiply those, I get a squared minus ab plus ab minus b squared. Well, my minus ab and my plus ab cancel out, and it leaves a squared minus b squared. Well, let's see. I've got a squared, and that's a square. And I've got b squared, and that's a square. And a squared minus b squared is the difference of two squares. So if I've got the difference of two squares and I want to factor it, it's going to be the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. For instance, if I had 4x squared minus 25, 4x, I can get the square root of that. That's just 2x squared. And 25, I can get the square, of that, square root of that. That's 5 squared. So, if I wanted to factor 4x squared minus 25, it would be 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. You try this one, and I'll give you a hint. There is no even number that's the square root of 8 or of 18. So maybe I have to factor a number out of 8 and 18 before I can use the difference of two squares. Hit your pause button, try this problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the solution. Well, I'll give you a good hint. We're going to start with 8 minus 18x squared. But there's, I could factor the 8 to 2 and 4, and I could factor the 18 to 2 and 9, and I could change this expression to 2 times 4 minus 9x squared. Now, 4 is a square that has an even square root, and so is 9x squared. So, I've got the difference of two squares, and I could factor that this way. 2 times 2 plus 3x times 2 minus 3x. Let's talk about perfect squares. If I had a plus b squared, that's the same thing as a plus b times a plus b. And if I were to multiply a plus b times a plus b, I'd multiply the a times the a and get a squared. And then I'd multiply the a times the b and get a b, and then I'd multiply the b times the a, and get another a b, and then I multiply the b times the b and get b squared. And I can simplify that to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And that's a pattern that you're going to want to memorize. When you've got a plus b, or any kind of uh, expression of that form, and you square it, your answer is going to be in this form, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. How about if I had a minus b squared? Well, that's a minus b times a minus b. And if I carried that out, it would be a squared minus ab minus ab plus b squared, or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So, 
the difference between a plus b squared and a minus b squared is the middle term. The sign changes in the middle term from positive to negative when the sign in the factor changes from positive to negative. Here's a great trick. Factor by grouping. In factor by grouping, we're going to use the distributive property to help us factor polynomials. Let's look at an example. I've got x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 15. And that's really complicated. I'm, I'm asked to factor that, but I don't, I don't see an easy way to factor it. Well, actually, I do. And I'm going to teach you this easy way. I'm going to break this up into two groups. The first group is x cubed plus 3x squared. And the second group is 5x plus 15. Now, I can factor something out of each of those groups. The first group, I could take an x square out of. I could change that to x squared times x plus 3. In the second group, I could take a 5 out of. I could say that equaled 5 times x plus 3. Well, now I got an x plus 3 on both sides of this plus sign. And if you remember the distributive property, that looks like the answer in a distributive property multiplication. If I had x plus 3, and I multiplied it by x squared plus 5, I'd get x squared times x plus 3 plus 5 times x plus 3. That's the distributive property in reverse. And it's helped us factor this relatively complicated polynomial. You try this one. Hit your pause button. Try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, here's a couple of tricks you're going to want to remember when you're asked to factor complicated uh, polynomials. The first is that if there are four terms in the polynomial, chances are pretty good we're going to be grouping the polynomial and solving it that way. The second trick is it's probably best to rewrite these polynomials so that they're in standard form with the highest powered monomial on the left and the lowest powered monomial on the right. So I'm going to rewrite this as x cubed plus 13x squared minus 5x minus 65. Well now I'll group my first two terms, the x cubed plus 13x squared, and I can see I can pull out an x squared from both of those and rewrite that as x squared times x plus 13. Now I've got to deal with the back half of this, minus 5x minus 65. And this gets a little bit confusing. I got a minus sign there, and then I'm going to put brackets and an expression after that. But you see, I put a positive sign between my 5x and my 65, and originally there was a negative sign. Why did I do that? Well, I did it because what I'm really showing here is minus 1 times the expression 5x plus 65. That minus 1 will change the sign of the 5x to minus 5x, and it'll change the sign of the plus 65 to minus 65. Well, now I can look at that second expression, 5x plus 65, and I can see I can pull a 5 out of both sides of that. So I can rewrite that as 5 times x plus 13. Well, oh my gosh, I got an x plus 13 in the back half, and an x plus 13 in the front half. So I can use the distributive property to rewrite this as x plus 13 times x squared minus 5. Sometimes factoring complicated polynomials completely is a little bit complicated. So I'm going to give you some guidelines to follow, some rules to follow to help you completely factor complicated polynomials. 
The first rule is to factor out the largest monomial factor. Here's an example. I want to look at each of the terms in this polynomial and see what's the largest monomial factor that I could take out of each of them. Well, I can see that each of these terms has at least a 2x in it. So I could take 2x out of each of these and rewrite this as 2x times x squared plus 4x plus 4. Here's the second rule. Look for a difference of two squares or a perfect square pattern in the polynomial. Well, when I look at the polynomial that we just created, where we factored out the 2x, in the remaining portion, I've got a perfect square. I've got x squared plus 4x plus 4. And I could factor that to x plus 2 squared and rewrite the whole expression as 2x times x plus 2 squared. My third rule is to factor a trinomial down to the product of binomial factors. What's that mean? Well, when we first started factoring trinomials, we talked about some techniques to find out what the factors of those might be. And when you see a trinomial, think about, well, can I just use a regular factor for that? For instance, x squared plus 10x plus 24 can be factored to x plus 6 times x plus 4. And lastly, if there are four terms, try grouping. If I have y squared plus y plus yx plus x, I can group the first two terms, the y squared plus y, and pull a y out of that and rewrite it as y times y plus 1. And I can regroup the back half of, of this polynomial, yx plus x, and take an x out of that and rewrite it as x times y plus 1. So now I got y times y plus 1 plus x times y plus 1. Well, I got y plus 1 here, y plus 1 there, and I can use the distributive property in reverse and rewrite this as y plus 1 times y plus x. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. All right, well, this is a fairly complicated little polynomial. I wonder what I should do. Well, my guidelines say the first thing I should do is to try to factor out the largest monomial I can find in each of the terms. And I can see that there's a 3 in each of those terms. And I can see that there's at least a z squared in each of those terms. So I can factor out a 3z squared. And I can rewrite this as 3z squared times z squared plus 8z plus 16. z squared plus 8z plus 16. That looks like a perfect square. That looks like z plus 4 squared. And I believe I could rewrite that in com that complete expression, that complete polynomial, as 3z squared times z plus 4 squared. Try factoring this one. Hit your pause button, factor the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, I'm asked to factor this expression, and there's four terms in this expression. And I remember that when there are four terms, I probably want to group the expression. So I'm going to group the m cubed plus 4m squared, and I'm going to group the 25m minus 100. And I'll rewrite this as parentheses m cubed plus 4m squared, end parentheses, minus parentheses 25m plus 100. Why is that now plus 100? 
It used to be minus 100. Well, it's plus 100 because I'm sub now subtracting both 25m and 100. So that minus sign means I'm multiplying that entire expression by minus 1. Or changing the 25m to minus 25 and the 100 to minus 100. Well, now I'm going to look at each of these um, uh, groups separately and see what I can factor out. The m cubed plus 4m squared, I can take an m squared out of that and rewrite it as m squared times m plus 4. And the 25m plus 100, well, I can take a 25 out of that and rewrite it as 25 times m plus 4. And now I see I've got, I've got an m plus 4 in the front and in the back of this expression. So I can use the distributive property in reverse and rewrite this as m squared minus 25 times m plus 4. Well, that's our lesson on factoring special products. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and there you'll find some worksheets and some quizzes that will help make sure you understand this concept. Well, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope we see you again real soon.